We are living during very strange times and unique times. So our investing techniques and uh, decisions should be unique and like never before as well. In the video, I'll share with you my decisions and solutions for the current situation. It's the time of the economical crisis, potentially a recession, but at the same time, it's also the moment of incredible opportunities that would be a shame to miss. So stay tuned if you want to find out more. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, my name is Anastasia and on this channel I talk about investing and if you're watching this video then you probably want to find out what on earth is going on with the market and what to invest in in order to not just save some money but also make some profit. I don't need to tell you what's going on in the world and why this year's investments should be different from the previous years, but I will mention some of the main things because I think they will explain some of the decisions that I made and that I will talk about in this video. So I will mention them just very briefly. Okay, so first of all, times like now are too risky to be investing into individual stocks and shares, but they are perfect for investing into ETFs. ETFs are fun that invest into many companies at the same time, which reduces the risk straight away. One of the most popular funds would be S&P 500, the fund that tracks 500 biggest companies of the US. It's a golden standard of investing, but the problem is that this fund includes a lot of tech stocks, which at the moment don't show great performance. People are more concentrated on simpler things like wheat shortage or gas supply, and even though so investing into these commodities is also risky and I'll explain to you why a little bit later. Tech companies will suffer the most simply because of the inflation and the economical crisis. I researched a lot of information on the internet and made my own all-weather portfolio that will hopefully see me through this time of the crisis. Please listen to my thoughts and let me know in the comments if you agree with me or not and remember that this is not a financial advice, this is just my experience experience and my investing decisions that I will take full responsibility for and this video is made just for entertainment. I think US is going into recession. When economy is good, equity performs well, but when the economy is bad, this is the time for bonds. When the inflation is high, the yield of bonds, in other words, your expected return on investment, is better than when the economy is stable and growing. But at the same time, buying bonds is a good idea only if you think that the high inflation will stay high only for a short period of time. As if inflation stays high for a long time, it's going to eat up all your profits from bonds. Bonds is a tool that helps us preserve wealth, not make huge profits. So I keep it that way. I don't expect high returns from my bonds, but I expect bonds perform better than in previous years because of the inflation, at least for some time. The only concern I have is that I hope I'm not too late with this decision. The next group of assets that I invested in is commodities. Uh, commodities right now are very important and if you look at the performance of commodities, especially such commodities as wheat, gas, oil, they've been performing very well in the last year or two. And the reasons to that are pretty clear, mainly it's inflation, it's a very tense political situation in Europe, it's the consequences of the pandemic, and the real results of all these problems will be visible in the nearest future. But there are also some risks that are involved into investing into commodities right now. USA is one of the main consumers of commodities in the world because of how well its economy is developed and how much gas and oil is used by the production companies that are situated there. Therefore, if USA enters a recession, the demand for commodities will be reduced massively, which in return will reduce the price of the fund itself. If companies close or produce less, they consume less gas. But the situation gets very tricky because of the Russian-Ukrainian war. Since I am Ukrainian, I naturally read a lot of information about the situation there. And honestly, in my personal opinion, this is not a fact. But I think that the wheat crisis will not be resolved in the nearest future. So I do think that the wheat price will go up. So considering everything I just said, I think it might be too risky 
risky to invest into each individual commodity, but buying a commodity ETF seems like a good idea to me. I might be totally wrong and I might be late for this decision, but only time will tell. Gold and silver, just like any other precious metals, are not the asset that you buy if you want to make high and quick returns. It's rather a tool that helps us preserve wealth, which, considering the situation, inflation and a bunch of other things, might be not such a bad idea. Historically, gold has been doing very well when the interest rates were going low, and bad when the interest rates were going up. We can see the same situation right now. Interest rates are increasing and the price of gold is falling. But as an investor, I'm just trying to be uh, one step ahead of the game. I'm trying to predict the possible moves of the economy and the market. Fed has already said that the hike in price will continue for several months more and then it will stop or it will start coming down. So hopefully soon we will have the end of the crisis. I mean, it will definitely stop because all crisis is stopped at some point. And this is when the price of gold will grow. But the real question is how low the price of gold will fall before it starts growing back. In my opinion, now is not the worst time to invest into gold or silver. That's why these precious metals take a big chunk of my ETF portfolio. I didn't go to the bank and buy a, a bar of gold. Instead, I bought an ETF for gold and silver, which is just a much easier way to invest into these precious metals. Gas and oil have been growing in price for a year now, and people who invested into these commodities in 2021 gained very good profits. But as an investor, again, I'm trying to be just one step ahead of a game. And the question I asked myself is, would it still be a good decision to invest into gas or oil? My answer is, I don't think so. Russia has started to send less oil and gas into Europe at the moment. Some European countries are really dependent on Russian gas and oil. So what is the solution? of this situation. I think that the European countries will try to look for a solution in some renewable energy sources. They will try to find an alternative to gas. And yes, governments were already saying for some time that they are trying to develop the alternative sources of energy, but the political tensions between Russia and Europe will speed this process up. So now might be a very good time to invest into alternative energies. Companies that work with such technologies or the route that I choose is to invest into an ESG ETF. Although I don't think the price will change drastically in the nearest future, I hope that sustainable and socially responsible investing is the future. And maybe in the next couple of years, the price growth will be faster than in the previous years, considering everything I've just mentioned. Now let's talk about where I invest into ETFs. There are two platforms in the UK that are the most popular among ETF and fund investors. They are Vanguard and Invest Engine. And I still hold my stocks and shares ISA on Vanguard, but for this particular portfolio, I chose Invest Engine, and these are the main reasons why. The ETFs I wanted to invest in weren't available on Vanguard. On the UK Vanguard platform, there are about 70 funds available. On Invest Engine, there are over 400 funds available. All the main funds are available on both platforms, but for strange times like now, the funds have to be a bit strange as well. As a result, none of the funds that I wanted to invest in were available on Vanguard. Next reason, Invest Engine is free. You pay the annual fee, which is different for each fund, but opposite to Vanguard, Invest Engine doesn't charge any fee for actually running my account. So at the end of the day, it works out a bit cheaper. Invest Engine has an app. It's not a big deal, but having an app is nice. The first deposit on Invest Engine is smaller than on Vanguard. And if you invest £100 with Invest Engine, you can get £25 bonus. And even though it's only £25, 
25 pounds of 100 is actually 25%. And if you were offered 25% profit on your investment, I'm sure you wouldn't turn your nose away from it. So if you want to register with Invest Engine, please use my affiliated link in the description box below this video and you will get your bonus after you make your first deposit. Also with Invest Engine, you can invest into fractions of ETFs, which means that you can invest as little as one pound into every ETF. The accounts with Invest Engine are FSCS protected up to 85,000 pounds. But remember that there is no guarantee that you will get any profits at all, just like with any investing. So my ETF portfolio right now consists of iShares ASCI World ESG in haste fund with the ticker EEWG and uh, I have 20% of my portfolio in this fund. Next one is iShares Physical Gold with the ticker SGLN and I have 20% of my portfolio in this fund. Next one is iShares USD Treasury Bonds 7 to 10 years, the ticker IBTM, and I hold 20% of my portfolio in this fund. Next is iShares Physical Silver, SSLN. I have 15% of my portfolio in this fund. iShares Agribusiness, 15% of my portfolio is in this fund. and iShares US Treasury Bonds 1 to 3 years, the ticker is IBTS, and I have 10% of my portfolio in this fund. I'm excited for my future videos and sorry that I've been away for so long, I've been super busy, I'll tell you in my next videos what with, but I hope that my next video will be out soon. Thank you very much guys for watching me today and bye bye.